So why don't we kick off with a quick poll in the audience. Hands up if you have dark mode enabled on your phones. Wow, that's a lot of you. Maybe like 50% for those watching online. So today we're going to talk about building dark mode at scale with React Native, of course. I'm Arthur, and I'm a software engineer at Chime. Chime is a US-based fintech company, and we provide banking services to millions of people in the US. And in fact, we're one of the top most downloaded finance, financial apps within the US in the last few years. And I pulled this uh, review from the App Store uh, about a year ago. Um, and it's just from one of our users, and it's really encouraging to see. You know, I absolutely love Chime, everything about them. The service is amazing, customer service is great, app UI is great. So it's really nice to see reviews like this. And you know, what, what do you all think? Five stars, right? Um, not quite. <laughs> the only thing this app is missing is dark mode. Please add auto system dark mode. I'll add more stars after an auto system dark mode is added. Three stars. <laughs> so, yeah. How do we build dark mode? Because we, we really want to get those stars back. We know how important each and every review is and each customer experience is uh, from, from the talks yesterday, too. So like any other experienced engineers, engineer, I headed to Google. But then I remembered it's 2023, so <laughs> chat GPT. So we're going to ask, OK, how do I implement dark mode with React Native? And it's going to say a bunch of stuff, output some kind of interesting code with like style sheets and the render function. But the point is, if you look at ChatGPT or the top five, 10 tutorials from Google, what you'll end up with is probably something like this. So we're going to start off by using the use color scheme hook from React Native. So figure out what mode the user is in on their phone. Then we might do some logic to figure out what colors to use based on the color scheme setting. And then we're going to use the style sheet APIs to set our views, text, or whatever components with those colors. And this is a totally fine approach, especially with newer, smaller code bases. But as we started to look at our code base, which you know, is over four years old and has you know, hundreds and hundreds of components and screens, we started to see a few problems with this approach. So today, I'm going to cover three different problems that we saw with this approach when we tried to implement dark mode at scale. And hopefully, this kind of turns into some insights that you can take home with you. So the first problem here is using the system setting directly. Now, if you've used any app that supports dark mode, you probably have seen that most apps implement an app level theme override. So this is nice because you kind of allow the users to uh, have their own preference. So maybe they have dark mode in their system, and then they want your, your specific app to be in light mode or vice versa. So this is kind of just like expected user experience at this point. But there's actually one other reason why this is super important, and that's to do with feature flagging. So at Chime, and like in many other you know, larger companies, we practice trunk-based development. This means that developers are often integrating their changes into the main branch, and we use feature flags to roll out features instead of the mobile release. By having an app-level theme override, we're able to put the theme switcher behind a feature flag and force all of our public users to you know, be on light mode while we're still working to, to kind of finish and polish dark mode internally. Um, no single developer or team can possibly implement dark mode in one go within uh, at our scale. So this allows us to kind of federate the responsibilities out to different product teams so that they can go and check out dark mode in their own feature and maybe even submit bugs or, or commit fixes to it. So doing this does require writing some native code right now. But in React Native 72, there should be a new API that comes that uh, will allow you to override the color scheme at an app level. So look for, looking forward to that. So that's problem number one. Let's take a look at number two. And that's not using color tokens. Now, this 
isn't dark mode specific. And if you've worked with a larger code base or with design systems, you've probably already done this. It's a great idea to, instead of using hard-coded color hex values, using color tokens instead. So these are like naming your colors and re referring to them by reference. We're going to recommend going one step further and using usage-based token names. So what does this mean? It means instead of using token names like dark green or light gray, col uh, name those colors based on usage, like border primary or content secondary. There's, like a few, there's a few perks about doing this. So one of them is that the same color can have multiple tokens. Now, you might be thinking, why would I even want that? There are two main reasons. One is maybe a border shares the same color as some text. But maybe in the future, with the redesign, you might want to change them into different colors depending on, on what the new design looks like. Oops, sorry. Um, and a second one is that if you map colors into dark mode, you might want to actually map different usages to different colors, even though they're the same color within light mode. So that's going to be really handy to have when transitioning to dark mode. And now let's look at the third problem. The third one is around modifying render logic. So this kind of approach requires us to go into the render function and actually change uh, the logic to take into account of dark mode. Now, what do I mean by this? At Chime, we still use the style sheet API. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, we, we, it works really well for us. We are moving towards more centralized design system components that take in kind of styles as props. Uh, but we still have like over a thousand places in the code base where we're setting colors uh, in, uh, in, into our uh, styles. What that means is, if you look at this example of like a sample component, we have hundreds of components that look like this. Uh, we have a view where uh, the container has a background color, and then maybe some other styles in it, like Flex 1. If we were to adopt the kind of traditional approach, we would have to do quite a refactor. We have to add in a hook of some sort. We then have to figure out what color we should use. And then uh, we also had to do this thing where uh, we had to figure out that the background color is something that we're now going to apply with inline styles. And then we, we have to like, leave the rest of the styles in the style sheet. And for a, mo a more complex component, this can be a, a pretty kind of difficult migration. Definitely not something that we can easily implement using a code mod. And last of all, we actually still have a lot of class components. So we wouldn't even be able to use the hook. We would have to use a higher order component, mess with the prop types and things like that. Kind of annoying. And yes, there are other solutions out there that help with dynamic styles, like styled components is really cool. Uh, but it still kind of requires changing that uh, logic to, to be dependent on props. And we don't use styled components. So at this point, we were a little um, disappointed. We didn't really want to embark on this large migration that involves touching a lot of components. Um, and we also didn't really want to modify all, a bunch of components and, and make the render logic more complex when they're actually simple components. So just when we thought we couldn't get those two stars back, we found an API called Platform Color. Now, what is Platform Color? Platform Color was actually introduced in React Native 63, so quite a few versions ago. It was primarily introduced for hybrid apps. So if you had a native app that already had a bunch of colors defined natively, if you added a React Native view in there, you can actually use platform color to hook into those colors. And then you wouldn't have to kind of copy your colors into the JavaScript world or keep them in sync. But it turns out that this API fully supports themes, or at least it eventually did after a bunch of bug fixes. And if you look at the platform color documentation in the React Native docs, um, you won't really see anything about dark mode except for this sentence that says, since native colors can be sensitive to themes, this platform-specific logic also translates inside your components. And that means that we can use it to build dark mode. Funny aside is that if you look at the React Native documentation, uh, React Native for Windows and Mac OS, 
there's actually a pretty great uh, write-up about how to use platform color to respond to themes. So definitely check that out. So how do we go about using platform color within the Chime app? We don't have a hybrid app. We're 100% built on React Native. So we don't have any colors defined in, in, within Native. Luckily for us, we found a great package from Klarna called Platform Colors. So all we had to do is define a colors.js config file. We simply listed all of the colors that we had in our app, the tokens and their light and dark mode values, and a bunch of configuration for where to output these, these, uh, these files. And then we ran yarn platform colors, which is the package strip that came with the package. And it generated a bunch of stuff for us. So it started off with generating an entry point where, so these are the color objects, if you will, that we will import from our components. Then it generated iOS and Android TypeScript or JavaScript files. And this is actually the only, one and only place that we are calling the platform color API from React Native. And each of these color values are actually objects that are references to specific colors. And they're kind of never um, resolved in, in the JavaScript layer. So JavaScript has no idea what these colors are. It's only resolved in the native layer. And of course, we have the native colors that get generated too, like XML on the Android side and Xcode assets on, on the iOS side. And because we already had all of our colors tokenized, even by usage, bonus points for that, uh, we could just switch out these hex values for these platform color objects. And then if we go back to that example we had, let's see what it takes to make this component dark mode sensitive with platform colors. That's right, no modifications were needed. So this was the case for 99% of our components, which was really, really compelling for us. But of course, there's always that 1%. So we just fall back to the normal kind of hook space approach where we do render, uh, modify render logic. And uh, this kind of mostly happened with uh, third party views uh, that might not support platform color out of the box or things like animations with like color interpolations. Those, we kind of needed those hex values, so we just kind of took the traditional approach, and there, there was nothing wrong with that. So let's take a look at what dark mode might look like. Doesn't that look great? There's something about seeing the app that you work on regularly in dark mode for the first time. It just looks so cool. And I don't know if you noticed that transition earlier. It wasn't a keynote animation. This transition from dark mode to light mode and back is actually recorded straight from the iOS simulator. Because the colors are completely handled on the native layer, iOS is able to smoothly transition between light and dark mode without needing for any re uh, React re-renders and so forth. So we have this really nice animation on iOS. I know, it's not quite as impressive as the Skia one, but <laughs> I'll take it. So why did we choose platform color at Chime? We got dark mode pretty much for free for most of our components. It was a hybrid solution, so we were still able to fall back to the more traditional hook-spaced approach for the components that didn't work with platform color. And because using platform color required us to set the uh, color scheme at the native layer, this means that a bunch of native views, like keyboards and third-party SDKs that might have native views, all of those get dark mode uh, automatically and, you know, if, if they support it. And last of all, there's this smooth transition to iOS, which is a really delightful user experience. But like any engineering decision, there are trade-offs. So here are some gotchas with platform color. 
It does add some native complexity. So with the traditional example, everything was kind of laid out in the, in the React component, so you can really easily understand what's going on. Here, that complexity is kind of hidden away in this mysterious color object that people might not expect. Platform color itself is relatively new, even though it came out quite a few versions ago. Uh, but there were still bug fixes up till as, early, uh, as recently as React Native 70. So be aware of that. This might be a big one for some, but and on Android, you do require an activity restart. Um, that's just kind of how dark mode works natively on Android. So, um, and because React Native is a single activity app, in most cases, it would require restarting the app. And you might have to write some native code, which might be a pro or a con, depending on who you are. <laughs> so let's summarize a little bit. To implement dark mode at scale, here are some of our learnings. First of all, implement an app level theme override. This allows you to do gradual rollouts or internal or alpha testing without affecting the rest of your users. This also allows you to do gradual rollouts and A-B test dark mode even if you wanted to. The second is to tokenize your colors, which you should kind of be doing whether or not you're implementing dark mode, uh, and preferably by usage. And last of all, check out the platform color API. It's pretty cool. So I did put together a quick example uh, of platform color in case you wanted to check it out. Um, here is um, a link to the GitHub repo. And I managed to put together this demo with Expo config plugins. So you could uh, define those colors within the app.json uh, configuration. And if you run the pre-build, it's going to generate all those colors natively. So it's, it's a pretty good, cool example. So definitely check it out. So yeah, I hope you learned something today. Um, uh, we're super excited about dark mode and getting that to our users and hopefully getting those two stars back. So thank you very much. Thank you.